It's a ride unlike any other. A relentless roller coaster of emotions, where heart wrenching sorrow intertwines with overwhelming honor and unparalleled pride. This is the only flight on Earth capable of rewinding time. It's the ultimate show of respect and gratitude. Because at its destination lies the price of our freedom. Tonight, you'll meet local heroes who fought for it. You'll live their experience, and you'll feel their patriotism. Take your seat for a magical journey. Welcome aboard the Honor Flight. Welcome aboard the News 8 special, Honor Flight San Diego. I'm News 8's Abby Alford. And I'm photojournalist Mike Edison. We have a humbling experience of going on Honor Flight San Diego. The nonprofit sends World War II and Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. to pay tribute to their service and their sacrifice. All of this is paid for through private donations. And for many of the veterans, this is the first time to ever see their memorial and to feel that pride. This journey was beyond an honor that we have ever felt. Abby and I felt a sense of pride and patriotism while covering this story. My father, William Lee Edison, Army veteran, passed away at an early age. So for me, I felt like I had 83 fathers over the weekend. We call them heroes because they are. We salute them. Welcome aboard Honor Flight San Diego. To even comprehend the words World War, just think how deep that is. World War II and 44 Korean War veterans on the honor flight to Washington, D.C. to visit their war memorials and monuments. Fred Campbell, mail call. On the flight, veterans opened 4,200 letters written by local students and loved ones. These last 35 years that we've been together have been the best of my adult life. Saturday morning after the sun rose, Patriot riders and park police escorted the veterans to the World War II Memorial. Very sobering, very sobering to see the memorials. And uh, it's a lifetime experience. The 4,048 gold stars on the Wall of Freedom reflecting off the water representing the 408,399 people who died in the second deadliest war to the Civil War. I was 14 years old. I cried every day for these people. And I'm still crying for the people who sacrificed their lives. Veterans watch in stillness at the Tomb of the Unknown. It made you think about all the poor souls who were lost. Chilling memories at the Korean War Memorial. We lost 53,000 guys. Marine Joe Kahlo survived the Chosen Reservoir, one of the fiercest battles in Marine history, surrounded by hundreds of thousands of Chinese forces in 60 below temperatures for more than two weeks. We're all going to come out together or we're not coming out at all, dead and wounded. World War II Marine John Menard also served in Vietnam and received a Purple Heart. He was shot and injured in his eye. My eyes, he's my hero, so. The only female on the trip and one of the first female naval officers, Dean Sugi. I don't, I don't consider myself a hero or anything like that. I just did what I was supposed to do and that was it. And this time, these veterans received their homecoming they've always deserved. Look at all these folks. And grateful to see the war through their eyes, the faces of courage. It really makes you feel proud. And I'll never, ever forget, he looks up at me and goes, are all these people your friends? And I'm like, Manny, these people are here welcoming you home and congratulating you on a mission completed. And it's given them a new renewed lease and reason for living. 
a trailblazer for women. Coming up, one of the first female naval commanding officers is honored at a memorial dedicated to women in service. But next. And I got buried alive because I was dug in a foxhole on a bench. The sacrifice and the heroic battles and a tribute to an honor flight veteran's last mission. stories he told me and I get this bump on my uh, head. What had happened there, a Japanese sniper had shot at him trying to hit him in the head. It happened to hit in the center of his helmet and did not penetrate him but he always kept saying I never was injured. December 7th, 1941 a date which will live in infamy. America officially in World War II, the second deadliest war. The last what, uh, three months of first camp was, was not very good. The greatest generation veteran, 96-year-old Air Force Lee Russell, says in October 1944, his B-25 plane was shot down in northern Italy on his 70th mission last mission before going home and was a prisoner of war in the Stahlgeluk 3 German camp. At the time I wrote that book, I came up with that expression because that's how I feel about it. And I was there. Russell joins 82 other war heroes on the honor flight, which flies World War II and Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit their memorials. Did I hear you say you saw the flight go up? Yes, sir. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I was on the beach. 93-year-old C.B. Marv Nottingham saw the infamous second flag raised on Mount Suribachi in Iwo Jima in 1945. He earned a bronze award for valor. I was on the beach and watched it go up. But everybody stopped what they were doing. So it was really impressive. Japanese-American Tom Honda and his family were sent to Poiston, Arizona in a Japanese-American internment camp and was later drafted in the Army to serve in the Korean War. I feel uh, very privileged to be to be a member of the United States and to have served in the military. Sergeant Joe Kala survived one of the most brutal battles in Marine history in the Korean War, the Chosen Reservoir. The Marine has frostbite in his toes, fighting 120,000 Chinese forces in 60 below temperatures for more than two weeks. Army Lieutenant General said the safest place in Korea is behind the platoon of Marines. Now, more than seven decades later, an honor flight filled with 83 American heroes. I like to think of uh, the World War II veterans and being a son of a World War II hero, that uh, this group was the greatest team that was ever met. They answered the call and they basically saved the world. This was a first for Honor Flight San Diego. There have been losses on other flights nationwide, but since 2010, 20 flights and sending 1,400 veterans, not one medical emergency for Honor Flight San Diego. But for 95-year-old World War II Army Sergeant Frank Manchell, he passed away on the flight home, surrounded by his newest best friends. Since then, his family has received condolences worldwide for an American hero. A husband of 71 years. He was just a good guy. And he was very cute, <laughs> very handsome. World War II Army Sergeant Frank Menchel was a father of three boys. My father taught his sons to, you know, respect people, to be good to people. On Manchel's last mission, he collapsed and passed away with his son by his side on their flight home from Honor Flight San Diego. And my dad was right there at the right time, and you know, it was just a beautiful ending to a, uh, you know, to a beautiful life. Dr. Bruce Manchel is his father's guardian on Honor Flight. He's wearing his father's blue polo sweater. My dad didn't talk about the military very much, and this trip kind of 
brought him out of his shell. We saw those connections made with other veterans while visiting the cryptographer at the World War II Memorial. He spoke about being on the Nuremberg trial, saw notes passed from Churchill to General MacArthur. They wanted to knock out a reader. We asked Manchel about what he wants the younger generation to know about the Second World War. Well, I think it's very important. But it's not only for us, for the rest of the world to take a look at it too. His wife Pearl says that he didn't talk much about the war, but wished that there was more honor. He used to say to me that the young people don't even know that there was a war, a World War II. His younger brother Jerry, also a World War II veteran, flew down from Michigan to do the tour of honor together. This is all secondary. The important thing is being with my family. Frank's two sons felt a new type of pride for their father. The people, young and old, coming up to him when he was wearing this hat, uh, they would you know, thank him for his service. That is something I have never seen before. Excited about the trip, Frank called his wife the day before he passed. She isn't much of a phone talker. Good father and a good husband. The family of the retired menswear store owner believes that Frank was ready. On her flight was his last mission, and he wanted to make sure his wife was okay. And I just could not have scripted a better ending for my father-in-law. Next, the only female veteran on this honor flight, San Diego, turned 100. Thank you, my heart, puppy. And I keep talking to my heart. I said, Don't you, aren't you tired? Would you like to rest a little bit? For advice on longevity and a special moment to honor her record of service. But coming up, the honorable dedication from Guardians and Honor Flight volunteers takes flight. She felt a great deal of pride and came home one day and says, do you know there's an elevator on this aircraft carrier and they take airplanes up and down? So I don't think she thought she was breaking barriers. I, I think that she thought that she had to support her country. During World War II, women were not allowed to serve on ships, but they were still trailblazers for females in the military. Dean Suey, she was the only woman on this past honor flight San Diego and she just turned 100. She says she's, quote, older than dirt, but her soul is young. Everywhere soon to be 100-year-old Evelyn Dean Suey, who goes by Dean, always sparks up a conversation. People of all ages are drawn to the World War II Navy veteran. One, two, three, two, two. Dean doesn't know it, but she's a very special visitor at the Women in Military Service for American Memorial in Arlington, Virginia, where she's presented with her record of service. And it's a gift from your honor flight. Oh, baby, I'm going to say, I love mm -hmm. it. Yep. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> with the Women's Memorial on one side, you're very sweet. Dean okay. overcome with emotion with her granddaughter by her side. Did you see that? I see it. Joe. Yeah. Yes. Little baby. Dean was ordered to report on a holiday, the 4th of July, 1943. Her service, active and reserved for 31 years in the Navy, showcased at the memorial. You know, I don't like that picture. It doesn't have my scrambled eggs. The scrambled eggs is the gold filigree on her hat, symbolizing a commander. Dean was one of the first female naval commanders. Her late husband was a captain. And he had four stripes and I had three. <laughs> Dean was a cryptographer, cracking communication codes. Dean is on Honor Flight San Diego, where they fly World War II and Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit their memorials. She was the only female on the trip and connected with another World War II veteran, Glenn Billman, who received her codes for ship movement. I still do puzzles. It's, to me, it's just like a big puzzle. Dean is about to turn a milestone. I'll be 100 on the 14th of May. If you couldn't tell already, she's sharp as a tack and gives her wise advice about longevity. I think attitude is a lot to do with the, I, I think drinking a little booze down there. This World War II veteran says she doesn't consider herself a hero, but we do. A strong pioneer for women in our country. You get orders to do something, you do it, that's, that's the way it goes. One of his finest memories is he was able to salute General Patton 
and shake his hand, and Patton took the map out of his hand and looked at it and went, good job, soldier. Next, the urgency to send World War II veterans on a trip of a lifetime to give them a renewed sense of pride. There are no words to describe what it means to me. This other, you know, young comrade had never seen a shower, didn't know how to use it, didn't know how to turn it on, and they had to teach him how to use a shower. So it really was um, getting them off the farms and, and out into service. As 83 war veterans load an honor flight charter plane, one of the team leaders, the longest serving, a military daughter and wife, Mel Titano, reflects on the unforgettable experience. Every time I leave the flight, it, my heart is always full. Honor Flight flies World War II and Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit their memorials. Since the memorial for the greatest generation wasn't built until 2004, many were not able to pay tribute. The Department of Veteran Affairs says of the 16 million Americans who fought in the war, fewer than 400,000 are still alive. We really have to get the word out. We really have to, to get these World War II veterans' time is of the essence. There are 141 honor flight hubs across the nation. Dave Smith started San Diego's in 2010 after taking his late World War II father on a lone flight. They've flown 1,400 veterans since. The $250,000 trip is paid through all donations. Veterans don't pay a dime and all run through a team of volunteers. The people and their service, it is uh, one way that we can give back to those that gave so much to us. The veterans are medically cleared for the packed three-day trip, mail call, World War II, Korean War memorials, and many more, and a flight home to an unforgettable homecoming. News 8 was embedded and it appeared seamless. Yeah, he's been probably the biggest inspiration yeah. due to what he did. Guardians can be as young as 18 years old, like Ryan Ruff, who escorted his Purple Heart grandfather. To experience it with younger generations and veterans, spouses are deterred. This is former San Diego Police Chief Shelley Zimmerman's first year as a guardian. Her late father fought in World War II. She used to line up at the airport for the homecoming in uniform. With the hugs and the laughter and the tears and the stories that they're telling, and it's just, you know, quite frankly, it's just so wonderful to have this opportunity to, to listen to them. And this is a trip of a lifetime for America's heroes and everyone they meet along the way. And if you ever need to know what the face of courage looks like, just look around the room. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America. Woo! Everybody's part in the war. Everybody had a very important part. Through Honor Flight San Diego, you can see just how deep the pride runs into our hearts and how important and urgent it is to send our World War II and Korean War veterans on a trip of a lifetime. Honor Flight San Diego has a fall flight scheduled in October, and as you can imagine, there are eager veterans who want to go. But it still needs the $250,000 for the Tour of Honor. They have a donation drive set up at honorflightsandiego.org. With so few veterans still living, the family say this trip gives them a renewed sense of living. Thank you for your service.